This is our linear regression model for maximum legibility distance, maximum legibility distance of road signs the, against the explanatory variable age. These are our computations. These are our results. There's our linear model, our F statistic, and our p-value. P-value less than 0.05. We rejected the null hypothesis and concluded that the data provides sufficient evidence that there exists a linear relationship between age and maximum legibility distance of road signs. Before we validate that conclusion, it is necessar necessary to check that the assumptions on which these computations were based are met because it is possible that we were able to reject the null hypothesis, hypothesis not because there exists a linear relationship but because the assumptions were violated. To do that we begin by computing the predicted values of distance which I will call y predict. The predicted values of distance according to the regression equation equals the A, anchor that, plus B, anchor that, times age. So there are predicted value is 355 feet, the observed is 350 feet, the difference is about 5 feet. It's called a residual. I'm going to call, we write residual in here and calculate equals observed minus predicted. That means this point was about five feet below the regression line. So let's go ahead and calculate all of these values. These are, these are our predicted values and our residuals. You need to take a look at a something called a residual plot. It is a scatter plot of residuals plotted against the predicted values of y. So let me go ahead to the scatter plot tool of Excel and make that plot. And there it is. And this, what we're looking for is whether these residuals are randomly arranged or whether there are patterns in the data. In this case, it, there appear to be patterns. In particular, there could be non-linearities or curvilinear relationships involved. And there could be other variables involved that weren't included in the regression model. A very important assumption in regression is that the linear model being tested is correct and complete. And if it were, these residuals would be completely randomly arranged. They are not. There are patterns. There appear to be patterns. That's my subjective assessment. These things, the, these assessments are always subjective. It may vary from person to person. So my, my subjective assessment is that the randomness of residuals is violated in this case. Therefore, 
the re results may not be valid. We must write a disclaimer that although we have found evidence of a linear relationship, it is possible that this evidence was induced by patterns in the residuals and not by a real linear relationship in the data. Had, uh, had the residuals been random, we would have to carry out yet another test. Because the sample size is small, less than 50, it is necessary that we convince ourselves that the residuals have a, follow a normal distribution. To do that, I will compute the standardized residuals. The standardized residual is the residual divided by the standard deviation of the residuals. Let me compute the standard deviation of the residuals over here. I'm going to use the Excel function STDEV. We could do it ourselves like we, as we did in the last video, but to save time we will use the STDEV shortcut and select these numbers and 84.7145 is the standard deviation of our residuals. So we compute the standardized residual as equal to the residual divided by the standard deviation and I'm going to anchor that so that it does not the reference does not change when I copy the formula down. That's my standardized residual. That is the difference between predicted and observed distances not measured in feet but it, but measured in the number of standard deviations. I'm going to uh, make a histogram of these standardized residuals using bins that go from minus 2 to plus 2 in increments of 1. I will use the data analysis histogram tool that uh, comes with the data analysis tool pack. And this is the data analysis menu. Click on data and then data analysis and this pops up. I will click on histogram. OK. For the uh, before, before I select data, I want to click on labels. That means my selection here will include the label for the, for the column and chart output. That means I would like to have a chart showing the histogram. My input range are my residuals, this, this column here. I'm sorry, that's not the correct column. It's this column there. And that's what it looked like. My bin range, that is the intervals in which the, the frequencies will be counted, occur in this range. And I want the, the output to go to a new worksheet. My chart output is selected. I click OK. And there's my chart. I get rid of this word frequency. Make this a little taller and bigger. 
and there is my histogram except that it doesn't look like a histogram because of these gaps between the bars. Let's pretty this up a little bit. Right click on any of the bars, select format data series, and you get this menu for gap width set no gap. Click on fill, select no fill. Click on border color, set on so select solid line, and now we click on close, and there's our histogram. What we're looking for is a unimodal symmetrical distribution around zero. Of course, with a small sample size of 10 or 11, it's not going to look pretty. But you have to, once again, use your subjective evaluation to see whether or not it, this sample could have been taken from a, a normally distributed population of residuals. In this case, my subjective evaluation is that the normality assumption is not grossly violated. Here's the center right around zero, and there's numbers on both sides, and it's unimodal. I'm going to say that uh, there's no, no, no strong evidence that the normality assumption is violated. So I'm going to get rid of this plot, go back to my data, and now under my reject the null hypothesis and uh, conclusion of a linear model exists. I must add A disclaimer and the disclaimer will be that the results may not be valid because the residuals are not random. So it is important every time you do a regression, it is important that you look at the residuals, determine whether your work is based on assumptions that can be verified or against whom we don't have very strong evidence, and then present your findings with the appropriate disclaimers whenever necessary. Thank you for watching.